Hi, welcome to Budget MTG Decks. All magic fun, all cards in a dollar. I'm David. And I'm Stefan. And today we're going to be looking at the, all the multicolored cards, the artifact cards, and the lands in Ixalan. But before we start, we have a Patreon page, and we would like you to help us with the pay, um, becoming a Patreon. And you will help us make more videos, and help us make the videos better in quality. Yeah. And become a Patreon on um, patreon.com slash Budget MTG Decks. I'm going to evaluate these cards for limited, like draft and sealed, like we've been doing before, like we're still doing. Exactly, and we're going to be using it according to our, or we're going to be evaluating them according to our three tier system. Tier one, these are awesome cards and winning you the game. Tier two, these are very good auto includes if you're already in that color. And tier three will smooth out your mana curve. Those are your filler cards and all the rest of the cards, we're going to put those aside. So let's get started with the common cards. The first of our common cards is Unknown Shores. Unknown Shores is a land that can tap for a colorless mana. Additionally, we can pay a generic mana, tap it, and then it produces a mana of any color to our mana pool. Well, naturally, if you're only gonna be playing one color, it's completely pointless, but if you're gonna be playing two or more colors, you can definitely include this. Why? Because it doesn't come in tap, so you, it doesn't slow you down on your mana, and uh, so you can basically just use it as a regular land and later, if you do need it, need it to fix your colors, you can. Sure, it'll slow you down with one mana, but sometimes you just need that specific color and then this won't be able to save you. Yeah, I always like it to have it because you don't have to uh, tap it for another color. You can just tap it for colorless. But you have to watch out with multiple colors and I don't th um, with multiple colorless lands. And I don't think you will have a one, uh, one color deck. No, limited. No, so that's true. So tier three, um, it's a good filler card. If you need some color fixing, this is it. Yeah. Prying blade, one gen uh, generic mana. It's a equipment uh, artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus one plus zero. Plus zero. Whenever equip creature does combat damage to a player, create a color treasure um, artifact token. And you have equip cost of two. So when you use combat damage to player, you get a treasure, it's only plus one plus zero, and it's one mana, but the equip cost is two, and that's a lot to keep doing it, and you need like something with trample or evasion to get the most out of it, and most of the time you won't, so I don't think it's good enough. No. You just put it aside. No, exactly. There's too many situations where I think, uh, you think, yeah, but if I put it on a creature and then the creature's got evasion, then I'm getting value, once again, have a look at all the situations where you top deck this or you get it on a, uh, you could put it down, you don't have a creature or even putting this on a creature, make sure that the creature can't attack properly without dying itself. That's, there's so many more scenarios where this card does not pull its way. Cobbled Wings is next for two generic mana. It is an equipment and a equipped creature has flying and also it has a quick cost of one. Now, as we all know, evasion is very good and we saw already that enchantment in blue that gives a creature plus two plus two an evasion, which was a fine filler card. This is the same. It's also tier three, also fine filler because just for the fact that for three mana, we're going to be able to give a creature flying and then should that creature be removed that we could get for just with generic mana, uh, give another creature flying again. It's good early and it's also good late. So that's why I like it. Yeah, it's still a pretty cheap way to get something, give something flying, and it stays on the battlefield, and that's really important. Yeah, I even like to use it, uh, uh, put it on one creature, attack with it, and then you can over equip it uh, in your second main phase to another creature and have that and have a flying blocker. Yeah. Pirates Cutlass, three mana uh, artifact equipment when Pirates Cutlass enter the battlefield, attach it to target pirate you control, and equip creature gets plus two plus one, and equip two, um, and it could cost for two. So it's pretty cool actually when it comes into battlefield you can equip it without um, paying the mana cost but it's 3 mana to begin with and equip cost of 2 uh, constantly I don't think that's good enough and put it aside. Yeah, I think the chance of getting the value out of it that you want is just simply too small. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Herofront's Chalice is next for 3. It is an artifact and when this guy enters the battlefield target opponent loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. Additionally we can tap it for a colorless mana. Okay, so uh, mana ramp, you think, okay, that's pretty sweet. Uh, okay, it drains a life, that's also pretty cool. However, uh, I just don't think this is gonna be enough. We saw a lot of uh, cards in green, which also ramp us also for three mana, and those we did wanna include, and we were very excited about those. Some of the reason why those are so much better is because they come on a body. So they come with a creature, we also saw the enchantment in green that also around that cost also gives us mana, but we did not want to include that. And the same holds true for this one. Yeah, and even 
the enchantment gives a creature plus one plus one counter and it will tap for any um, color. Yeah, so yeah, substantially worse. The next one, Gilded Sentinel. Four mana, it's a 2 3 um, artifact creature um, golem. So it's a 3 3 vanilla for four, which is pretty decent. You can play it in any deck, so it's a good filler. Yeah, fine. Any deck can, can play this. Yeah. You don't have to feel bad about this. Uh, that is the last of the commons. Let's have a look at the uncommons. The first one common is Unclaimed Territory. It's a land, and as Unclaimed Territory enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. And you can tap it to add one color to your mana pool, and you can tap it to add one mana, any color, to your mana pool, spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. That is not that relevant that you can choose a creature and then you pay uh, mana to get a color of it. If you play a lot of one creature type, sure. But to be honest, I don't think the downside of playing one colorless land to mana fix you in certain um, ways is a bad thing and I think it's a decent filler. Because you'll have like some pirates, some dinosaurs, vampires, merfolk and it's just a bonus and the one colorless won't set you back too much. But like I've said before, if you have a lot of colorless land then maybe think, do I really need this? Yeah, you probably don't want to include it in that case, but if you yeah. don't uh, you could always just look at whatever uh, creature type you're splashing the most of, so the one that you're most likely going to have problems with, and then just just name that creature, mm -hmm. right? And of course, it doesn't come in tapped, which makes it actually just always playable. Yeah. Field of Ruin is next, also does not come in untapped, and just tap for a colorless mana, and additionally, paying two mana, tapping it, and sacrificing it allows us to destroy, target non-basic land our opponent's control, and then each player searches his or her library for a basic land card and puts it into the battlefield, then shuffles his or her library. So in essence, we're talking limited right now, so we just got those, we just got the two players, we're gonna lose this land, and they're gonna lose uh, their non-basic land, you may think, oh great, I'm gonna get rid of their best land. They may have a cool unclaimed, unclaimed territory. Or well, maybe they, they transformed one of their enchantments into one of those lands. Once again, that is a fantasy that that will happen. Most of the time, everyone's just playing basic lands. And if they do happen to have a non-basic land, it probably just just one of the uncommon or common lands. And it's just not gonna be worth it to, uh, to, to use this land for that or that slot. So I would just say, uh, we'll put it aside. Yeah, and if you, um use it when you destroy another land they can tap that land if they want um, tapped again and then your mana ramping them for a turn Ooh, yeah they don't want that exactly no next one sentinel totem one mana it's an artifact when sentinel totem enters the battlefield scry one and tap exile sentinel totem exile all cards from all graveyards like we've we've seen like nearly all the cards in the set and does not any, nearly anything that does anything with the graveyard so just put it aside. Yeah, not, not, not really the playable ones. Except for the mythic black one, which yeah. gets everything. But you know what? Once again, such a tiny little scenario where that could be relevant. So don't play it. Next card, Pillar of Origins for two generic mana. It's an artifact. And when this thing enters the battlefield, we're going to choose a creature type. And then this thing is going to be able to tap for one mana of any color as long as we use it to cast the creature of that type that we chose. Okay. This is actually much worse than the land because the land will always at least give us generic uh, mana. This one will only give us the mana if we happen to be casting that creature. So what are the odds? Very small, don't use your card slot for this card. Exactly, and you have to pay two mana for it because in land you don't. Yeah, it's just that. <laughs> yeah, elaborate fire cannon. Two mana artifact, elaborate fire cannon doesn't untap during your untap step and four uh, mana and tap. A level 5 cannon deals 2 damage to target creature or player. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may discard a card. If you do, untap a level 5 cannon. So, it is all too expensive. And that's why I don't think you want to play it. It doesn't really do that much damage. It pays, it costs a lot of cards. It costs a lot of mana. Don't play it. Yeah, it's a lot of, it's once again these things that it could be good early. It could be go, good late if the cost for each one of those things was just more reasonable. Yeah. Now they just priced it out of being something that could have been a very awesome cannon into now just a simply very elaborate cannon. Too now, elaborate. It's it, too elaborate, yeah. What is not too elaborate is the awesome, the Sky Terror. For a red and a white, we get a 2-2 flying dinosaur with uh, Menace. Now, before we go into the discussion that yes, all these flying pterosaurs are not technically dinosaurs, 
Let's not be overcomplicated. We know the dinosaurs were technically landless. This is a fantasy world. Let's just focus on the fun. Sky Terror is a flying dinosaur with, fly, uh, with menace. And of course, it, basically it has double evasion at this point. Because not only does it have the super relevant mechanic flying, but of course it needs to be blocked by two or more creatures. And for only two mana, being a 2-2 in the air is simply incredibly powerful. That is a tier 2. It makes me want to play red and white because if you can pop this on early, you're doing great. And actually late game is also pretty good. Yeah, it's kind of like unblockable because it's flying and the menace. So it's like an unblockable creature that can block flyers. Yeah, we haven't seen uh, tons of 1-1 uh, flying tokens, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty much going to be as unblockable as can be. Yeah. Next one, Dire Fleet Captain, a black and a red. It's a 2-2 two -two Orc Pirate. Whenever Dire Fleet Captain attacks, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each other attacking pirate. So it's most of the time a 2-2 two -two, uh, for two, which is good enough, and it has upside. And the upside is actually pretty big because it's also boosted toughness, which is important. Yeah, once again, it needs to be good enough the power and toughness for the price without the potential upside and the 2-2 two -two for two. That's filler. Yeah. yeah. Next, we have the first of our vehicles, Sleek Schooner. For three, we get a 4-3 vehicle with crew one. Okay, not only is this a spiffy little uh, ship that we've got over here, but actually the cost of crewing one is very affordable. The power and toughness is actually not as high as we've seen in other vehicles for the cost of the vehicle itself, but the crew, the, the, the low cost of the crew kind of balances that out. I would probably always see, find a way to see if I can fill this in, in the deck, so it's not an auto-include, but it, it, I think it will do a lot of work. So I would put it in as tier three. Maybe I should explain what um, vehicles do. Okay, go ahead. So it's um, an artifact, but it's not always a creature, because um, a crew is like something you ha um, people you have to put in the car or the ship now, um, and you have to tap those creatures to make it a creature for one turn. So it's not always a creature, so um, sorcery speed board wipes, they will stay on the table and you can um, play a creature afterwards and tap that creature to um, make that vehicle a creature itself. And the crew X, the power is the power and the total power of the creatures you tapped. Yeah, so what's important to remember is when this thing comes in, it does have summoning sickness, even though it's not technically a creature, so you can't immediately tap a creature to crew it and then immediately attack with it. But what you can do is if this thing's already on the battlefield for a turn and then a new creature comes in, even though that creature's got summoning sickness, the vehicle in this case can tap the creature to crew itself and then it can go. It's yeah. kind of confusing, but you know, once you get the hang of it, it makes yeah. perfect sense. Um, well, I always think of it is um, all, everything has summoning sickness, but only creatures are affected by it. Mm -hmm. So if you make it a creature, then s suddenly, oh, I got summoning sickness. Yeah, that's the way to look at it. Yeah, and um, the thing is, you don't tap the creature of its own ability, it's his ability that taps the creature. The ship's, it's the ship's yeah, ability. The ship's yeah. ability. Very good. Shapers of Nature is next for one, a green and a blue. We get a 3-3 Merfolk Shaman, and he's got two awesome abilities. The first one is for three and a green, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. And the second one is for two and a blue, remove a plus one plus one counter from a target creature you control, and then draw a card. Now we've seen these cards before where we pay for it to add plus one plus one counters, and just that by itself was simply too expensive. But now, with the fact that it's a second ability, and it's uh, being able to draw cards on those counters, which is very nice. And also just the fact that for three mana, it is a three, three body, which is super, super strong. So that is tier two, um, the versatility, the power and toughness, it's all great. Yeah, it's so important that you can actually put a creature on something else on Counter. instant, uh, yeah, yeah, on instant speed. Yeah, so it's not just itself. Yeah, that's strong. so good. Strong, yeah. Marauding Looter, two um, blue and a red. It's a 4-3 human pirate and it has weight. Beginning of your end step, if you attack with a creature this turn, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Every single turn when you attack, you can loot. And that's so great. And it's only 4 mana for a 4-3. Play it tier 2. Yeah, the body is insane. Of course, the looting is not right, uh, right away. It's only at the beginning of your end step, which means uh, you won't be able to play whatever card you, you got from the, from the looting. But still, for your next turn, of course, if it's instant speed, you can. So it's pretty decent. Yeah, 
Is looting every single turn for doing what you want not good enough? It is amazing. Tier 2, if I, if I made it sound like it wasn't amazing, then uh, my bad. No, it's definitely super, super sweet. And plus this one has the word looter in the name when it's looting, so I'm happy with that. Next we have Call to the Feast for 2, a white and a black, so for 4 mana we get a sorcery which creates 3 one, one white vampire creature tokens with a lifelink. Now, once again, I'm not a big fan of these 1-1s, one, even though they do have lifelink. So you can say, ah, oh, you can use it to crew the one thing. No, don't, don't do that. And you say, ah, oh, I'm going to use it as blockers. I can save myself from dying three turns. Great. Why don't you spend that four mana to do something which actually matters? Uh, so don't play these little vampires. Just put it aside. Like a Morning Luther, for example. <laughs> the next one, does Legion Dreadnought. Five mana, it's a four, six vehicle with Legions and crew two. It's a tier three for us. Um, it's a... A lot of mana, but it's a 4-6 with Vigilance, and the cool cost isn't that high. So, I like it, tier 3, good filler. Yeah, what's really cool about this, we haven't seen Vigilance on vehicles very often, and it's not an ability that we uh, that we value very highly. But what's cool about this one is that late game, uh, when you do have a couple of 2-2s two that are not doing anything, then in essence, you've got yourself two 4-6s, because you can use one of those to crew uh, the Dreadnought and then attack with it. And then in your opponent's turn, when they can attack, you can use, use another one of your 2-2s two to crew it again, and then you can use it to block. So that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. You need a lot of people on deck. You need some people on deck, but you're, you're, you're hitting them when they're coming and going. That's pretty sweet. Then we have Dead Eye Plunderers for three, a blue and a black. So for five mana, we get a three, three human pirate. Okay, so the body's fine. Uh, and it gets plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. Okay, we can't assume that we'll have any. So let's just say we can disregard that. But for two, a blue and a black. So for four mana, we can create one of those artifacts, which is, of course, a treasure, which not only makes it a four, four, but also we can do it multiple times late game and of course if it is early game we could always use it to uh, mana boost mana ramp us into our bigger stuff so it does stuff all the time and once again it's good early well turn five or not really early but it's a mana sink it's a great body and it color fixes and it mana ramps and it also be, you can also just use it to get bigger and bigger all the time to attack with so it does tons of stuff i love it yeah it's so great because it's a mana sink, like you said before, and if you, you don't need the mana, sure, I'll make a mana for later. And if it dies or something happens, you can just use that mana for something else. And that's just so great. So good, huh? Yeah. Raging Sword Tooth. Three and a red and a green. It's a 5-5 five, five dinosaur with trample. And when he ends the battlefield, he deals one damage to each other creature. So it's kind of like a semi-board wipe. Um, you can play it second main when you attacked and they blocked or something like that but still it's a 5-5 five, five, uh, trampler for 5 and that's also really good and I think this will win games yeah we've talked already that uh, board wives are usually tier 1 this is a light one we've talked about that big creatures with trample are tier uh, tier 1 very often this one does a combination of both uh, so yeah together still tier 1 yeah Next, Belligerent Brontodon for five, a green and a white. So for seven mana, we have a four, six dinosaur. So all in all, right now, the body is not good enough uh, to make it uh, very good because it's very expensive, seven mana. It also has the ability, though, that each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So it's actually a six, six. Now that is pretty sweet. It only works for your creatures, which is pretty cool. These dinos you will notice that in these games you will mostly have creatures which have equal power and toughness. This is because also in limited the commons and uncommons, the Wizards of the Coast wants to make sure that combat is relatively clean and, and simple. So they try not to make asymmetrical uh, power and toughness too much with their commons and uncommon cards. So it won't be the case. You, you won't get too much value out of it. But being able to have a 6-6 a six, six for 7 mana is still fine. Still fine filler for late game. 6-6 six, six is still fine. It's still fine. <laughs> this is all right. Yeah. It's fine. It's, it is fine. Right. But it's good that I um, overvalue my just a little bit bigger toughness creatures. Yes. Then you're, then you're sitting pretty. Absolutely. All right. Great. Those are the uncommons. Let's have a look at the rares. We start the rares with our allied dual lands. The first card is Sun Petal Grove. Now it comes in tapped unless you control a forest or a plains. And the reason why it has to be those two is because it can tap for either a green or a white. 
Now, the same holds true for Glacial Fortress. Now, this one comes also comes in tapped unless we control, in this case, a plains or an island, of course, because you can tap for a white or a blue. Then Drowned Catacomb is next. Same story, this time it's gonna need an island or a swamp to make sure it doesn't come in untapped, but it also will give us either a blue or a black when it taps. Then we go to the very cool Dragon Skull Summit. I don't know why that was especially cool. They're all, they're all equally cool. And this one will require a swamp or a mountain, gives us black or red. And then finally the Root Bound Crag, which gives us a, uh, uh, which can give us either red or green, but it will need a mountain or forest if you wanna use it right away. So those are the uh, the lands, the rare lands. I like how the dragon skull song is like, I like that one because it's dragon. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a simple creature. If it has the word dragon in it, I like it. Very simple, yeah. But why isn't it a, a dinosaur skull summit? I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking. Because we needed a weak print, okay? Okay, fine. <sighs> At least you put get, a dinosaur you, in it. You get good cards. There's a dinosaur on Woodbound Quack. Ah, good enough. Good enough. <sighs> okay. Some people. Ah, okay. Sorcerer's Spyglass is the next one. Two mana artifact, a Sorcerer's Spyglass enters the battlefield, look at an opponent's hand, then choose a card, any card name, activate abilities of sources with the chosen card name, can't be activated, faded, unless they're mana abilities. It's um, illimited, it's great, it's not great, it not actually not do anything, but I think it's cool because you look at a card in the hand and it's like, hmm, I don't want you to use that one. Yeah, but it's not like he could say, I don't want you to use this uh, piece of premium removal, or right. I don't want you to use your bomb. It's exactly. none of the stuff that's actually winning games in limited that you can stop them from doing it. Exactly. That's why, like I said before, like it's not good in limited, but it's a cool card, so just put aside for limited. Yeah, it's a cool card for Commander. So just save it for that, right? Yeah. Next is a flip card, Dowsing Dagger for two mana. It's an artifact equipment. And when this thing enters the battlefield, target opponent creates two zero two 2 green plant creature tokens with Defender. So we give him a nice little wall to protect itself. And the equipped creature gets plus two, plus one. And additionally, when the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, we may transform Dowsing Dagger. Now the equip cost is two. So in essence, we're gonna be paying four mana to give a creature plus two plus one, and now we're gonna to need to deal damage to him to get some kind of value out of it, but we gave him two blockers for free, so that's one, two, at least a third turn before we can effectively try and deal damage to that uh, opponent, and you know what, in three turns, I'm thinking that they probably got something else to block with by then as well. But let's say that it flips. It turns into Lost Veil. Lost Veil is a land which can tap for three mana of any one color to our mana pool. So this is of course a wonderful promised land, a mythical place, which we will never get to. So I would just put this card aside. Yeah, it's just so much things. And um, if you play it on turn two, it will be on turn three, and then you will attack on turn four. So no, because you play a creature on turn three and mm -hmm. uh, four. So you put attack on turn five. So don't play this. No. It's no. just too late. It doesn't do enough. No, exactly. And it gives your opponent blockers. Don't do it, no. Shadowed Carvel. Two mana vehicle, a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever a creature you control explores, put a plus one plus one counter on Shadowed Carvel, and it has a cool cost of two. Like we said before, it isn't that much, but it's already also a 2-2 two, two for two on its own, and you cool it um, with a two power thing, so just put it aside. It's super redundant. You're it basically is. hurting yourself by paying an extra two to, to use the 2-2, two, two, to use this 2-2. Two, two. I mean, this thing should be at least a 4-4, four, four, you know, yeah. to make it worth it. So just, no, don't do it. You, it can be a 4-4, four, four, but you have to explore two times. And uh, uh, not, not gonna happen, not gonna happen. Thematic Compass for two mana. It's an artifact and we can pay three mana and tap it to search our library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into our hand, and then shuffle our library. Then at the beginning of your end step, if you control seven or more lands, we're going to transform this thing. That's not a May ability, like last one, we have to do it. So uh, it turns into Spires of Oraska. It's a land, it can tap for a colorless mana, and we can also tap it to untap target attacking creature and opponent controls and remove it from combat. So of course, this doesn't mean that we're gonna be exiling that creature or destroying it or anything, and all it does is just gonna remove it from combat, it goes back to the battlefield under our opponent's control. Uh, and it just didn't deal any damage. So is this any good? 
Actually, yes. Why? Because it can it can actually uh, get a slant, so it's wrapping us, and then later on it can um, stop your opponent's best thing from dealing damage every single turn. And it, and uh, we can also use it for land if or for mana if we don't uh, if we don't use it for that. So super versatile, very cheap ability. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and you can stop people's um, combat ticks. Yeah, when they pump something up, they're like. Oh, you know what? It's not attacking anymore. Yeah. Oh, that's so nasty. You block with something, they or they attack, you block, then all of a sudden they make something bigger, and then ha, they got you, and they say, no, now that thing's gone back. Yeah, I mean, it's still got the plus three, plus three, but it's not in combat anymore. <laughs> <sighs> no, this is, this is a very nice card. Yeah. yeah. Next one is Treasure Map. It's a two mana artifact. For one mana and top, uh, square one, put a landmark counter on Treasure Map. And if there are three or more landmark, uh, landmark counters on it, Move those counters, transform treasure map, it's not a main ability, and create three colorless treasure artifact tokens with se uh, yeah, three, oh, yeah. three treasures. <laughs> and then it transforms to treasure cove. It's a land, it turns for um, a colorless, and you can sacrifice the treasure to draw a card. And you already got three treasures. So that's actually really nice. And I think it's a tier 2 because for 2 mana, you can scry, which is good. If you're done with scrying, you can get treasures, you get a land, and you can sacrifice treasure to draw a card, or you can still make, uh, use the treasure to ramp yourself. Yeah, plus of course the land itself that it became. So that is yeah. super, super sweet, very nice, just always included, I think, if you got it. Yeah, yeah, always included, such a good card. Next, Fell Flagship for three mana, we get a 3-3 three, three vehicle. It also states that powers you control get plus one and plus zero, okay incidental upside uh, and whenever this thing deals combat damage to a player that player discards a card it's got a crew of three now you may now once again i think three power and toughness for a vehicle that costs three i think is not good enough i think the fact that it pumps your pirates is also not good enough but the fact that uh, when it deals damage to your opponent and they have to discard a card that is actually really nasty ability to have and the fact that it's not a 2-2 or something so it can actually affect uh, attack relatively effectively um, I think I would I would put it in as a filler. Not always auto include because I do think that the power and toughness is a little bit too low for what we're paying for, and the crew three won't be able to be it won't be able to be crewed by your bears by your two twos, um, so that kind of pushes it just out of reach for me to say like yeah always put it in and you're gonna have to look at whether you really want it in tier three. Yeah, it, the thing is for me um, if you have a lot of smaller creatures then these things can get better, and even like if you have pirates it's just even better so that's why like it's kind of situational but even if you don't have any of those things it's still okay yeah like for example if you have a pirate then of course even your 2-2 pirate will be able to crew this vehicle yeah cool primal amulet four mana artifact instant sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast and whenever you cast instant sorcery spell put a charge counter on primal amulet and if you have four more charge counters on it you may remove those counters and transform it and it transforms into primal wellspring uh, tap at one mana of any color to your mana pool when this mana is spent, is spent uh, to cast an instant or sorcery spell. Copy that spell, you may choose new targets for this copy. So it's a four mana card, you play um, instant sorcery cheaper, and if you play at least four of them, then you can transform to land that copies your instant sorceries, but it's just too much, you won't be able to spend much instant sorceries anyways. You will have around 6 non-creature spells, non-land spells, and this was one of them, so you have 5 more, and this already turned 4, and then you have to cast 4 other, uh, more, don't do it. No, you will never, ever get the multiple castings out of this thing, yeah. and you will barely ever get a single discount out of it. Exactly. So Very disappointing. It, put it aside. Very disappointing. Gal uh, Conqueror's Galleon, for 4 we get a 2. Five vehicle, so this thing loves the Brontodon, which uh, has uh, things deal damage equal to their toughness. Uh, when this thing attacks, exile it at the end of combat, then return it to the battlefield transformed under your control. It's got crew four, so in essence, we're gonna need uh, four power in creatures at least to crew it, and we're gonna be attacking with it. It'll most likely survive because the toughness is insane. People won't really even be too worried about blocking it because the two power is not that high. So we've got almost a guaranteed uh, transformation over here, and it transforms into Conqueror's Foothold. It is a land, which can tap for a colorless mana. Okay, fine. Remember, this is already after turn five, 
let's turn four, then turn five, your type is to transforms on turn five. Um, so the land, okay, nice, but you know, it shouldn't be the end of the world. However, we can pay uh, two mana, tap it, draw a card, and discard a card. Okay, cool, so we can loot with it for two mana every single turn. Remember, looting every single turn is really important in this game, in limited, so that's actually really nice. We can also pay four mana, tapping it, and then drawing a card. That is also very strong. We want to be drawing. That's even better than looting. And for six and tapping, we can return target card from our graveyard to our hand. So if we if we happen to know that that excellent piece of removal, that awesome bomb has to be in our graveyard, then we can pay an extra two mana on top of the drawing card. So we're not going to draw a card. We're going to be getting that awesome card back. May seem like a lot, but in limited, this is going to be super, super strong. If this, this line would just be by itself, of course, it would be tier one. Uh, but we first need to make sure that we got the Conqueror's Galleon, that we play it on turn four, that we have stuff to crew with it, that we can attack, that it doesn't die to something like Death Touch or just a bucket load of creatures that want to block it. And then afterwards when it transforms, then you get the value out of it. So uh, it's a fine filler card, but it's just not auto-include because there's still some hoops you've got to jump through. Yeah, you still need to, like you said, the creatures and everything. And it's... Um it's still a lot of mana to invest in the other abilities, awesome, but still yeah. it's a really, really good card. Yeah, if you get it, if you get it to, to if work. If you get it to work, <laughs> yeah. So, filler. Filler, yeah, filler. Yeah. that's why. Hostage, uh, hostage Taker, two and a blue and a black. It's a two, three human pirate. When Hostage Taker enters the battlefield, exile target creature or artifact until Hostage Taker leaves the battlefield. You may cast a card for as long as it may exiled, and you may spend mana as though it was mana of any type to cast that spell. So when it enters battlefield, it will take something over, it will exile it, and you may um, play it. So Stockholm Syndrome, that will A little bit, you. yeah, a little bit, yeah. It's kind of like, uh, I'm taking you, and he goes, oh, but I don't want to be taken anyway, but here's some mana, and you go, oh yeah, I guess I'm fighting for you now, <laughs> right? So you just bought your own, bought your hostage over? Yeah, you just yeah. converted it, yeah. yeah. So tier two, it's a two, three, four, four, not that exciting, but you can steal something, you can cast it, and it's yours. And remember how powerful mind control effects are, how powerful it is to take our opponent's best thing, they lose the best thing, and we gain the best thing. Sure, we gotta pay a little bit of mana, but remember this thing comes with its own body as well. And even if you don't have the mana right away to play that bomb or that awesome thing that you took over, you know, just wait a few turns, and as long as this thing's still on the battlefield, we can still just cast it. Yeah. Super cool. Vanquisher's Banner is next for five mana. When it enters the battlefield, we're gonna choose a creature type, and then creatures of that chosen type get plus one, plus one. Also, whenever we cast a creature of that type, we're gonna draw a card. Naturally, when it comes to playing super synergistic decks, super tribal decks, this is a lot of fun. Commander players are gonna be playing this till the end of time, but we in Limited and in, uh, so in, in Draft and in Sealed, sealed we are not going to be playing this and we're going to be putting this card aside. Yeah. Where they saw Alpha 3 and a red and a green. It's a 4 4 dinosaur. Other dinosaurs you control have haste. And when he enters the battlefield, create a 3 3 green dinosaur creature token with trample. And I think I always want to play it because uh, it's a 4 4 for 5. Already good. Other pe um, dinosaurs have haste. And you have a 3 3 with trample that has haste when he comes in, and that's insane because it's seven power for five mana. Yeah, that's unheard of. Yeah, yeah. just play it, just play it, tier yeah, two. It is insanity. This thing comes in and he goes, oh, small little buddy, you can just already go ahead and I'll, I'll join you in the next one, right? Yeah, super nice. Chomp, chomp, always play this super awesome dinosaur. Then we have Admiral Beckett. No, that was the last of the rares. That is the last of the rares. I'm sorry, I'm getting too excited. I want to get started with the mythic cards, so let's go there right away. Since they were really excited for the uh, mythics, I'll start. Admiral Beckett Brass is the first one. It's, a, it's one mana, uh, blue, black, and a red. A 3 3 human pirate. Other pirates you control get plus one plus one. Like I said before, pirates, incidental is nice, but you won't have to count on won't count on it. At the beginning of your end step, gain control of target non land permanent, controlled by a player who was dealt combat, uh, combat damage by 3 or more pirates this turn. So we said before, don't really count on the pirates, so you just put it aside, it's a 4 mana 3-3, three, three, but it costs 3 colors, no. Yeah, it seems like such a great card, and it is a good card, and we're gonna put it where this good card belongs, and that is as the commander in our pirate commander tribal deck, and not anywhere else, right? 
you know, because we just say it's put aside, we do what we do with good cards, put it aside. <laughs> and into our commander decks, right? That's where it is, all aside. All right. Hwatil Warrior Poet is next for three, a red and a white. So for five mana, we get a three loyalty Planeswalker. Now, her plus two ability is we gain life equal to the, uh, equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. As we know already, of course, white and red has plenty of dinosaurs, so that's cool. We can get we can get quite a bit of life out of that. Additionally, the plus zero is create a three three green dinosaur creature token with trample. Once again, uh, uh, planeswalkers, which are very strong, are ones that when they come in, they're able to protect themselves either by making sure that the opponent can attack properly or by, in this case, putting down a creature which can block effectively. And, and, and of course, if it doesn't get removed, it'll be able to deal a nice amount of damage. And of course, next turn, you can plus two it. And if, even if that's the only creature you got, you can gain three life right out of that because you've got the three, three trampler. And the minus X is this guy deals X damage divided as you choose amongst any number of target creatures. Creatures dealt damage as weight can't block this turn. So what you could do is you can also, you can either use it as removal once it's got enough loyalty. You can also use it to just ping one point of damage to each one of those creatures that would normally want to block, and then you can just attack with impunity, and your opponent won't be able to do anything about it. Yeah, I like that you can um, attack with something, like we said before, with the one damage or the other thing. This one also, also when it comes in, she can do like two damage to two creatures when they die, and that's really nice. Yeah, it's and got a lot of versatility. Yeah. But again, one thing that we shouldn't forget, Stefan, when it comes to Planeswalkers, is it's a Planeswalker, so it's tier one and we're playing it. It's always a tier one. Yeah. Even if she wasn't a Planeswalker, like if we wouldn't put Planeswalkers in tier one always, she's still tier one because she's so good. Yeah. So good. So strong. Funa, Butcher of, uh, Butcher of Megan. Three uh, white and a black. It's a 4 4 vampire knight for five mana. 4 4 is already good. It has vigilance, it's good. Lifelink, it's also good. And tap, pay seven life, store to destroy target non land permanent. Activate ability only during your turn. I think uh, all the things I just said all were all good. Yeah, all, all great. Yeah. So I tier one and it removes things, it gives you life. You can pay life to remove other things. But it's not even close. It's like tier one, not even close. Because first of all, it comes in super early on yeah. turn five being a, a four or four life linker. Then you can attack with it. You're gaining life. You're dealing damage. Maybe you're killing stuff. And then in your second main phase, then you can tap it and pay that seven mana and still destroy something else. You can attack with it, destroy the blocker, the only blocker they have if they only had one creature, and then swing to oh, the face that's even more nasty yeah you can do what in the attack yeah. during the attack you can tap yeah. and destroy something ah oh. so before they declare blockers exactly this is nasty t1 yeah. play it play it please do if you have it you gotta play it next we have vraska relic seeker so vraska is back for six a black and a green so for seven mana she's now an it's clearly a pirate some six kind. mana uh sorry yeah for six mana i thought you said seven no, no, I said okay. six mana. Six I mana. don't know. I heard seven. Sorry. Well, then if I said seven, <laughs> I, uh, I misspoke. For a six mana, we get a six loyalty planeswalker. Her plus two is to create a two-two black creature token with menace pirate. Pirate, very important. And the minus three is to destroy target artifact, creature, or enchantment, and to create a nice little treasure for ourselves. And the minus ten, which of course should win us games, to make targets life a target player's life total become one. Okay, yeah, that, that, that probably will win you the game. Cool. But even then, coming in on turn six, it's expensive for Planeswalker. Yeah. I mean, it comes in late, but it's limited, so we're going to be okay playing that. And of course, the fact that on turn uh, on the turn that it comes in, you could make it into an eight loyalty Planeswalker with a body to protect itself. People are going to have a real hard time getting rid of this. And just the next turn already, you could do it again, get another blocker, and then you're already at 10. So you could already minus it the turn after that. Well, I actually like even more than making a 2-2 it's unconditional removal on six mana and you still have three loyalty left and you get a treasure from it that's true it's even better yeah but either way either way it's super strong fast is always cool ramping destroying creating an army making your opponent one I one life, have one less. Ah, it's, it's too. I can't even. I, the words cannot come out of my mouth because of how powerful this Vraska is. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to have the patience or the mana ramp to be able to get her out on time before you're dead. 
It's six should be mana. possible. Should be possible. It's tier six one. Mana. Tier one, super awesome player all the time. Yeah. Tishana, Voice of Thunder. Five and a green and a blue. It's an XX Morgan Fox Shaman. And Tishana, Thunder, uh, Tishana, Voice of Thunder's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. Seven, um, turn seven, turn eight, turn nine, something like that. You won't have that many cards in hand, most likely. And you have no maximum hand size, so I, yay, I guess. But when she enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each creature you control. So it's at least a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> and you got a card and replaced itself. But there's also scenarios where you do have three or four creatures, yeah. and then it almost refills your hand again. You got a nice little blocker. Uh, with, of course, drawing cards is good. Well, if you refill your hand again, you get a nice big blocker. You get a nice big <laughs> blocker as well. Once again, this is one of those cards that uh, that can be incredibly powerful, but if you top deck this and you have no board state to speak of, then you're really sad. Exactly, and this is like kind of like difficult because it's like really good when it's really good, but it's like really bad when it's bad. Yes. And I think I want to put it in tier three because it's still not auto include. It really depends on your card draw in your deck and everything you have and the m amount of creatures you have. So that's why tier three and not higher. No, exactly. Then we come to the very last of the mythic cards, the very last card in this set. Uh, Gishath, Sun's Avatar for five, a red, a green, and a white. So we're talking eight mana here. We've talked about eight mana, it's expensive. We get ourselves a seven, six legendary dinosaur avatar with <gasps> trample, vigilance, and haste. Additionally, when this guy deals combat damage to a player, we're gonna reveal that many cards from the top of our library. So let's say if it wasn't blocked, we're gonna, we would reveal seven cards from the top of our library and then put any number of dinosaur creature cards from them onto the battlefield, so not even into our hand, and then put the rest at the bottom of our library in any order. So, you know, we've talked about cards that are very synergistic, that only care about pirates, for example, only care about merfolk, vampires, or in this case, dinosaurs, we say, don't play it because, you know, it's what are the odds? But this one, the second part doesn't matter that you don't get any dinosaurs. Let's say there are no dinosaurs. This is the only dinosaur. That doesn't matter. You but have the. What do you mean? If you draw this, you're playing random dinosaurs. It's <laughs> you don't free have, dinosaurs. You don't free have dinosaurs. to play you random know what's dinosaurs. Better than dinosaurs? Free dinosaurs. That's, That's what's better than dinosaurs. That's true. And even if you play no other dinosaur, <laughs> having this 7 6 come in, and remember, even top decking this, this is super sweet because it comes in and it has haste. You can immediately smack face with it. With it. And the fact that it has vision, you'll also be able to block so you don't even lose your blocker that turn. And the trample, we've discussed that big cards with trample are just as good as slightly smaller cards with flying, for example. So these cards win games absolutely, positively, super sweet, and it is uh, just a sweet dinosaur. It's a tier one, you play all the dinosaur colors. Yeah, it's a tier rex, if you will. <laughs> all right, sorry, I hate, to, I hate to end the video on that note. That was painfully awful. So let's have a look at the conclusion. In conclusion, as usual, there's not a lot of surprises here when it comes to the multicolored cards, the artifacts, and the lands. Why? Because as usual, the artifacts are kind of eh. Why? Because they can be played with any color, so they have to be uh, just less powerful than the color requiring counterparts. Then we come to the multicolored cards. Those are all actually from very good to very amazingly good. And why? Because they require multiple different colors which means that they're more difficult to play, so you should get a little bit extra if you can play them. So all in all, if you find these multicolored cards, they're usually tier two, which means that if you are already looking at those two colors and you have to get this nice multicolored card, they usually auto include, but be careful that when you grab one of those uncommons and it's a sweet dinosaur two colors and it's, it's, it's a tier two, that you don't think to yourself, okay, I'm building around this one uncommon card because that probably won't work out very well for you. Yeah, you don't build around your uncommon. You just build a solid deck with your commons and uncommon, and you top it off with your bombs and rare, mythic, whatever. Yeah, and then see if you have some multicolored colored cards which can fix exactly. in that strategy. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like we said before, like the um, multicolors are always like pretty good, and um, now they're still pretty good really good yeah and it's really i'm actually quite surprised that there's quite a few uh from the rares and the mythics that 
are not auto-includes, that are not tier two, which some you may even want to put aside. And that's because this set is very much focused on giving us that tribal feel and, and for uh, constructed and in the sense uh, standard and commander and all the kind of formats. These could be very interesting, but just it just we won't be able to get that synergy in uh, in draft and sealed. So unfortunately, we're going to put those aside. Yeah, but if you do get a sweet tribal uh, pre-release deck, you should tell us. Yeah, tell us which of the tribes you played and whether it was awesome or whether it failed to perform. And we'd love to hear about that. Yeah. yeah. We're also going to pre-release, right? Of course we're going to pre-release. Yeah. We're going to do the midnight pre-release and we're going to try and uh, force dinosaurs. I'm going to try and force dinosaurs <laughs> with my uh, sealed packs. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I'm probably going to die because I'll be up at 5 a.m. the day and working the whole day. So. Yeah, you'll probably be just sleeping and people will quietly win the game from you. Also, I'd like to remind you guys that we have a Patreon page. If you want to help support the channel, go to patreon.com slash budgetmtgdex. Uh, for the next uh, reward, let's say for, for us, is uh, we're going to make sure that if we reach our next goal, we're going to upgrade the lighting in here uh, and make sure that the videos look a little bit nicer. And uh, of course, what I'm also going to be doing is I'm going to be force feeding myself rapid rapid speed 10 fricandela as soon as possible or as quickly as possible on camera and for those of you who don't know a fricandel is a very large dutch sausage and uh it's not wise to eat 10 of them very fast uh, one after the other so i'll just be doing that for your twisted amusement the things with the goals are like we're torturing david and like that's the main amusement and the little other thing is improvement to the channel yeah a little bonus for a little torturing bonus. me yeah <laughs> so if you want to torture me go on over to the patreon page and uh, consider helping out the uh, the donation to torture me I exactly guess. i yeah. already paid him for your amusement yes yeah, so you can go over and check that out over there also join us on facebook and on twitter we can have a discussion there at budget mtg days do you uh, like these cards what do you think about these multicolored cards do you think tribal uh, these tribal synergies are possible in, in uh, sealed or maybe not in sealed but definitely in draft let us know what you think about that also let us know once you have that once you've done your pre-release how did you do what were your cards of the match which cards underperformed we'll have the discussions over there also subscribe to us here uh, at this channel uh, because if you press the the bell button you'll get notifications about when the next videos are coming out and of course we've got uh, these are all the review videos for Ixalan but of course we've got the next set which is also coming out and we also do deck text uh, top five lists etc so make sure to hit that little uh, subscribe button and also a little bell button so you get notified for the most uh, powerful decks and advice everyone can afford that was it i'm david and i'm stefan this was budget mtg decks